If you would like to improve your sleep, a new strategy might be implementing time-restricted eating. We're going to dive into a new randomized feeding study here. This is a isocaloric feeding study that randomized 41 subjects to either a 10-hour time-restricted eating window or a 16-hour ad libitum feeding window, and the investigators wanted to see if time-restricted eating would impact sleep quality and sleep duration, which they found it did. Now, for those of you that like to dive into the details, this study found that eating between the hours of 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. actually improved sleep quality and sleep duration. In contrast, when subjects were randomized to the ad libitum feeding window, which was 8 a.m. to midnight, what they found is that those individuals didn't have improvements in their sleep in contrast to the group that implemented a time-restricted eating window. The title of this paper that was published in the journal Sleep on the 17th of April, so this just came out, is Effects of Time-Restricted Eating on Actigraphy, which is a way to look at sleep quality and sleep duration. It's, I think, a wrist mount monitor. Actigraphy derived sleep parameters, post hoc analysis of a randomized isocaloric feeding study. For background and perspective, time-restricted eating is a novel dietary intervention targeting weight loss and cardiometabolic risk factors. The impact of TRE on sleep patterns remains underexplored. This was a post hoc analysis of a parallel arm controlled feeding trial in 41 adults with obesity and prediabetes, randomizing the subjects to either adhere to a time-restricted eating protocol, as I mentioned. The windows were 8 a.m., was like breaking your fast in the morning, and stopping all ingestion of calories around 6 p.m., or a usual eating pattern between the hours of 8 a.m. and midnight for the course of 12 weeks. The investigators objectively determined sleep, sleep-wake patterns from seven-day wrist actigraphy data obtained at baseline and from week 12. From this data, they derived total sleep time, sleep midpoint over the 24-hour period, sleep onset, offset, and sleep continuity measures. Now, what was really interesting is the midpoint of sleep shifted 44 minutes earlier in the individuals who ate on an early time-restricted eating protocol between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m., and it remained unchanged in the individuals eating between 8 a.m. and midnight. I think that's really important. They conclude that time-restricted eating increased sleep time and caused earlier sleep onset compared to the usual eating pattern, revealing how timing of eating may affect sleep timing and duration. Now, we're going to get further into the details about why this may be and other interesting findings, but first, I just want to thank you for being here. Hopefully, you're enjoying this content. As you know, Sleep and light are really important for your metabolic health, cardiovascular health, how you age, and your body composition, which is why I'm a huge fan in the evening time to wear blue light filtering glasses from the good folks over at bondcharge.com, the makers of an array of health-promoting tools, including these really well-fitted and amazing blue light filtering glasses. I've been wearing the blue light filtering glasses from Bond Charge since 2016. They make some amazing lenses in a range of different shapes for your faces. Uh, These are the Brooklyn frames that I particularly like. Another frame that I like is their Denver frame. There's a bunch of different frames, but if my daughter and I are like watching a documentary at night, or if you have to do computer work at night, or you have to be on your phone for some reason in the evening time, invest in your health by going to bondcharge.com forward slash HIH and check out their amazing array of blue light filtering glasses. Now, I like the orange version at night, but they also have a daylight version that's more clear. And so I have uh, several different pairs. My daughter has a pair as well. I think this is really important, my friends, because we're learning so much more about how artificial light of all sources can negatively impact your circadian rhythm health, as well as your overall metabolic health and blood sugar and sleep quality and sleep duration. So again, you can save by going to bondcharge.com forward slash HIH or click the link in the description below. Now, when we look at this graphical abstract, I think it's important to look at the average recorded time of sleep. You can see here in the usual eating pattern in the blue, it's much shorter compared to the time-restricted eating pattern, which is much wider. I think that's important to acknowledge that there was an increase in total sleep duration and a change in the midpoint of sleep when individuals have a confined eating pattern. Now, why are we making a mountain out of a mountain over this? Because sleep is so important. If you're not getting good quality sleep, everything else in your life will be thrown off. Everything from your blood sugar levels, your hormones, your appetite, your mood, fertility, detoxification. I mean, the list goes on and on. So I think it's really important to start 
And many of my clients that I've worked with over the years, they have sleep issues, whether it's sleep disorder breathing, or they go to bed super late, or they have what's called social jet lag. So during the week, they go to bed at like 10 o'clock, but on the weekends, they go to bed at one in the morning. And so it's really important to optimize this and a great way to help foster a healthy circadian rhythm starts with when you feed, because it turns out that your body starts to anticipate meals. So if you eat every day at 10 a.m., your body is going to start to adapt to that and will release pre-meal insulin responses and, and you know, incretin responses and beyond. And the same holds, the same theory or mechanism holds true when it comes to exercise. So it's good to eat at the same time every day and start your fast at the same time every day and exercise at the same time every day as well. Because believe it or not, your circadian clock system is... Uh, intervenes within your musculoskeletal system. So it's really important that we are consistent with our habits because that will translate into better sleep quality and sleep duration. Now, as you get older, as many of you have found, as you get into your 50s and 60s, sleep is a major issue, especially for peri and postmenopausal women. So I get calls all the time, I see emails, I see comments. What can I do to optimize my sleep during menopause? And of course, taking oral progesterone can really help at night because that gets converted to allopregnenolone, which helps with sleep quality and sleep duration in women as they go through menopause. Supporting DHEA levels is really important as well as you get older because the only hormone that doesn't go down with age is cortisol. Cortisol only progressively increases as you get older. And when you, when you take DHEA in the evening time, that can help antagonize cortisol, which can help mitigate the deleterious effects that cortisol has on your body's circadian clock system, on skeletal muscle health, on metabolic health, and beyond. So it's really important, my friends. Now, you don't have to follow this feeding window, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. It can be 10 to 6. It can be 10 to 7, whatever it is. But it's good to be consistent with your feeding fasting time in my estimation i know some people will say it doesn't matter you know just a calorie is a calorie is a calorie like it doesn't matter when you eat and that is not corroborated by the emerging and burgeoning field of circadian biology which posits and in, in the main theory uh, therein is that our bodies operate and are influenced by timing and the circadian rhythm the circadian clock uh, genes influence expression of different proteins, of different enzymes, of hormones within our muscle cells, within our gut cells, within our brain, within our eye, and beyond. So light exposure and food exposure and exercise all influence this circadian clock system, which can be easily perturbed, as you've likely found out throughout your life, when you travel, right? When you, if you live here in North America and you go to the UK or Europe, you're going to have jet lag, right? This is well known. Well, some people induce social jet lag in their own lives inadvertently by going out and partying on the weekends. And then they wonder like, why can't I lose weight? Why do I have high blood pressure? Why do I have insulin resistance or an autoimmune disease? So this is a really important thing to consider, my friends. And what I like about this is this was an isocaloric feeding study. So for the folks that say calories, it's just, it's all about calories, right? It doesn't, timing doesn't matter. Okay, now when it comes to body composition, some of that may be true, but other proxies of health like sleep quality and sleep duration are clearly impacted by meal timing. So that's the important point here. So what's an ideal window? Well, I think something between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. or 10 a.m. and 7 p.m., Having hard stops and starts is important. A lot of us get into trouble in the evening time with ice cream, with cookies, with post-meal snacking and so forth. And I think it's good to just pump, just hit the brakes and just say, look, at 7 p.m., that's when I stop. I'm gonna have dinner every night at 7 p.m. or I'm, I'm gonna break my fast every morning at 9 a.m., whatever the time is that works with your schedule, with your family, with your work obligations. But having boundaries around when you feed and when you fast, turns out, are really important. If you agree with that, let me know in the comment section below, my friends. I would like to know if fasting, particularly time-restricted eating, if that has impacted your life and your sleep quality and sleep duration. Let me know in the comment section below, my friends, and we'll catch you on a future video down the road.